Saul Leiter, known for having photographs that look like painting. Before we get started, I just wanted to mention that I am a little under the weather, so I may sound a little nasally. Uh, I don't typically sound like this if this is the first time you're watching my videos, but you know, got to do what you got to do. So for this video, it's going to be a little weird with the audio, but I'll do my best to keep it clean. So Saul Lighter, I do have one of his books here. This is the unseen Saul Lighter. This is all the stuff that he's always kept in storage. And then after his passing, somebody did go through it and pull out a lot, a lot of photos that nobody's actually seen. But most of you guys actually might know him from his other book, Early Color which he is one of the other pioneers of color photography along with so many others, but he just has such an interesting look with his photos. To give you guys a brief history about Saul Leiter, he was born in 1923 and he actually went to school for theology, but he actually dropped out and he actually came to New York to study being an artist. Now that I'm thinking about this, a lot of photographers did go to art school and then became photographer. So now I'm like thinking, he's like, man, I should have went to art school. I should have tried to become an artist to be a better photographer. And you know, I missed out on that. We don't need art school, I believe, but they do teach you like most of the fundamentals. And I think that the fundamentals that you learn in art school can carry on into photography. And specifically with Saul Leiter, he really took a lot of that and I think that's really what transformed his photography. So the question is, what are some techniques that Saul Leiter did that we can do today? Well, the first one, and I think the best one to start off with is weather. Saul Leiter was very big with the weather. If it was snowing, if it was raining, if there was mist, fog, anything like that, he would actually use that to his advantage. And he would shoot through windows with the water drops on them. He would spot a red umbrella outside, which is like a typical thing that you'll find with his photos. Um, and the snow is coming down heavily, you know, all that type of stuff. So he is one that really used the weather to his advantage. Now I'm just quoting Saul Leiter here on his thinking when it comes down to weather. He, uh, he said, a window covered in raindrops interests me more than a photograph of a famous person, which tells you so much about the guy in such a small sentence. It's like, it's not about who the subject is, but it's about you know, what's going on, what's the story that you're trying to tell here. It's not just about the famous people. It's And you know, it's unlike me who shoots outside in the cold with barely a jacket on, that's why I'm sick today. You know, it's something that I always like to try, especially when it's raining outside. I think rain creates a lot of reflections, but also it adds to the scene. It makes it a little bit more moody. It's a lot more fun. Um, so if you guys are gonna try this one, definitely, you know, be best prepared for the weather and don't get sick like I am. Now, uh, another technique which may be difficult because it's not really much of a technique, it's more of a kind of gear focused uh, item, but he used a lot of telephoto lenses. And for everybody who knows, telephoto lenses creates this kind of compression. So the best way to explain it is, you know how there's an old saying that camera adds 10 pounds? Well, they say that because a wide lens may stretch out the face, but a like not so wide lens, a telephoto lens will actually compress everything together and kind of squeeze it all together. And that is kind of one of the signature looks within Saul Leiter's photography. Now there's so many more, but the compression that you get, the length that you get from a person across the street, down the street, and things like that does add on to the feeling of it compared to it being stretched out. This one is all pushed in together. For the third point, I'm gonna bring back another quote from Saul Leiter and it's, everything is suitable to be photographed. Everything is a photograph. So in other words, you know, sometimes the simple things in life, you know, you can take a photo of it. You shouldn't be scared to take a photo of things that you would find interesting. So of course you would find like a diner, maybe just a couple things on the table. To most people it might not be interesting, to you it might be but you shouldn't be afraid to take these kind of photos and kind of do what you want and take photos of whatever you want. And that's an interesting thing to think about because I know I hesitate sometimes like, ah, people won't find that interesting or, you know, it might not be as cool as, you know, I think it is or something like that. But to him, if it interests you, you should probably take a photo of it. And I think that's something that's very important that we should all keep in mind when we are out there photographing. Now there is a ton more that we can learn from Saul Leiter, especially his coloring and all that stuff. Like I said, a lot of it is gonna be fundamentals of art that he brought over into his photography. 
but I definitely encourage you guys to check out both of his books, The Early Colors or The Early Works, I believe it is, or Early Colors. And then The, All, the Unseen Salt Lighter is really interesting as well. Um, you know, I wanted to keep it a little short. As I said, I am under the weather, but I wanted to push out this video for you guys. Uh, definitely leave a comment down below if there's anything else that you think we can learn from Saul Leiter or another photographer that we should be looking into. Uh, definitely reading all those comments. Thank you guys so much. Definitely hit that like button down below if you enjoyed this video and subscribe to the channel so you guys can see the next one. I'll see you guys there.